I think the expectation is that fairy tales are universal and fixed and that somehow they've never changed, they, they're archetypal. And though there's an element of truth in that, there's also a great deal of history attached to how the form has evolved. And it's very interesting to explore the, the, these shifts, what fairy tales are popular when, why stories of wicked stepmothers, for example, emerge at a certain time in history, why then they recede. For example, now we have probably a great interest in the Bluebeard story, a story of an ogre and I'm afraid a sexual predator ogre, and that's because our times are very concerned with such crimes. We are living in very conflicted and dark times. The news media, of course, have proliferated and they can bring us news of things that perhaps we didn't know about in the past. But because we're living in a time of child abduction, ghastly civil wars, a lot of this kind of cruelty is examined, explored, and confronted in fairy tales. And it's confronted in ways that are very different from the realist media or the naturalistic stage production. And that symbolic language overcomes particular locality or particular time to speak at a deep level about these, these terrible calamities. The fairy tale offers the idea that if we can formulate our experiences in language that is lasting, we can use that experience to withstand the conditions that the story is telling. And of course the classic example of this is the Arabian Nights in which Scheherazade tells stories to save her life. And in a sense that is the message of storytelling in itself. We tell stories to understand better in order to circumvent the story we're telling to get out of it, to get out of the plot, because by knowing it, we might see a way out.